All right. Thank you guys for joining us for another episode of the Grand Host Podcast. This is episode 20. I am your host, Edwin Cabrera. Across from me is my homie, my day one, Chris Martin, a.k.a. Krita. Eight. Hey. We have a very special guest today, all the way down from Brockton. Joining us right now is Luke Bars. Luke Bars, Luke who, Bars. just Yo. like I was saying earlier, best album 2020 right now. Hands down. Thank you. Hands down. <laughs> How you feeling, man? So good, man. Like, today was a good day. Like, um... Just was in the studio all day, just cooking, finding new ways to push the album. What's the What's the reception been like so far? What What, what people have been saying about the album? A lot of great things. Um, I haven't really heard anything negative yet, which makes me kind of curious. Not that I'm searching for anything, but it's just like, wow, all these people like it, and it was crazy because like, when I first made it, I was really thinking op- our artists are weird, bro. Like we're we're weird people. So like in the process of making it. I was like, oh my God, is people gonna like this because it's so vulnerable and like hip hop is not like this. Like, but that that whole year that I was just making it, I was just dealing with that. But now that it came out and I seen the reception yeah. and people are telling me like, yo, they nearly cried yeah. when yeah. they heard this. And I, like, I don't mean to, uh, cause so I think the last time I really connected with an album as much as I'm connecting with your album. Yeah. Um, I think last time I really connected with an album was Swimming from Mac Miller. Like that's been, right. it's been a while since I've really like, cause you, you're right. It's, it's very vulnerable, but I think it's so relatable, yep. yeah. you know? And so I like it, 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 like even the last song, God, like it just, that song has been playing like background, like background music in my yeah, head since yeah. I heard it, you know? It's beautiful. Um, so this, I guess there's an element where you just kind of latch on to, to the music and just like, also just, um, I don't know, there's a uniqueness to the, to the album that I think you, you, uh, you did a great job of bringing out. Thank you, man. So, uh, sorry to cut you off. I wanted to start by kind of getting all the, like, who is Luke Bars questions yeah. out of the way. Important. So I'm going to ask you the very first question, just in, and um, um, we might be a little rushed in t- uh, just in, in terms of time, um, uh, but so I'm just going to jump into it uh, with what inspired you to pursue hip hop music? Um, it's weird because I didn't, like, Growing up, I was never, like, into it. Like, basketball was, like, the main thing for me. So it was, like, a contradiction to make music itself. Like, it started off with my mom buying me a notebook when I was in, like, second grade, I think. And I would write my day, like, what I did for that day, and that led on to, like, poetry, to short stories. And then I I think when I turned 15, it turned into rap. So growing up, I never expected to be a, a musician. Even now, it's still, like... Like, I'm doing this. Like, I never expected to be a musician. So all this is fairly new to me and all that. Wow, that's crazy. crazy. Yeah, I never expected this. Like, now it's still, it's still like, a new feeling. W- when did you realize that this was something you wanted to pursue for serious, like, as a, as a career and as, like, a uh, just for your life? When I turned 19. What happened? Um, I just had, like, a eternal awakening. And it was just, like, you got to go after this. You know what I'm saying? Um, before then, it was just like I was playing around with it and all that. Like, I did it for fun. But I just I just experienced something, and it was like, yo, you got to go after it. Like, this is what you're meant to do on this earth, and go ahead and do it. And don't be afraid of anything that may come in the way. But, like, just accomplish this goal of yours. That's beautiful, man. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. So, so um, it seems like as a – and it's, it's maybe this kind of coincides with the – the the growth you've had as an artist but yeah. like i feel like from when you first came out to yeah. the your newest album good evil by the way and i didn't even plug it yet if you haven't listened to good evil do that right now because it's amazing it's but a, it's a good record <laughs> but um so you you uh when you first started out to your new album there seems to be like a, a progression and growth in your artistry do you want to mm-hmm. talk a little bit about like kind of what was going on there and like the different things that you worked on. Like I, I like your melody now is just like, yeah. just the, the different uh, uh, skills that you bring into to your music is, it seems a, to, to hit a different level. So can you talk a little bit about that? Um, It all just stems from me just growing as a man, and as a human every day, and just me being more confident. Cause all that from good evil, that was always there from like, from the time I made life is weird. Like, um, Life is Weird, the old single I made in 2017. Um, All the influences are still there. It's just I'm more confident doing it now, you know? And um, 
yeah, it's just, it just came from confidence and from this human growth. That's all you can do. You definitely have, um, like, a unique sound. Like, yeah. what, like what, some, what are some of those, like, influences? Um, a lot of cartoons as yeah. a kid. Um, Eminem, Nicki Minaj. Like, I always love the way they use their voice. Yeah. Especially Nicki. She's crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Personalities, yeah. Crazy. And, like, I just wanted to do that with mine just to make the music just fun. How long did it take you to, like, find the, the way that you wanted to sound, if you know what I mean? Um, not too long. Like I said, it just came from confidence. Yeah. Just me not being afraid to do it. I think once I started taking more control of creating the music, once I started recording myself, that's when more confident, like, I became more confident with it. So... Once I took that approach, I was able to do a lot of weird things because it was just me in the studio and I wasn't afraid to be me around me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So once I took that approach, it was just more, I was more free with it. Dope. Dope. You, know I mean? you want to talk about, uh, I want to talk about Van Buren for a second and how you guys kind of, like, how did that collective form and then talk about uh, the members of the group? Um, There's about nine of us, I believe. Mad heads. It's like the Wu Tang Clan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but um, we're all just homies from Brockton. Um, kind of separated in age a little bit. Um, like it ranges from like twenty six to twenty. Um, but we all come from the same city. We all came from the same high school. Different times though. But we all came from like um, this place called the Sound Lab, and it's kind of like the YMCA to like the music scene. Well, it was. It's shut down. Well, it's not shut down now, but the building that we once knew was shut down. Mm. But we all came from there, and we just used to throw shows, and just everybody used to just go there and hang out and just create and all that. And that just led on to taking it outside. And That's dope. You know, that reminds me of, do you remember Club America and Lynn, Frida? I think so, yeah. It's a, yeah. It doesn't exist anymore. No, right? it doesn't. Um, they shut it down. But it reminds me of that. There used to be this place in Lynn called Club America. It was like kind of like the Boys and Girls Club. Where like you had people yeah. rapping. You had people like uh, break dancing. It was just like a dope place to like, if you were like a teenager, to hang out. Yeah. yeah. Sounds exactly like that. Exactly. Is that how that brotherhood that you guys have formed? Because it seems like. Yeah. I mean, some people are actually legit brothers. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Felix and um, Ricky, they're blood brothers. Oh, word. Yeah, yeah. Word. But, yeah. But um, we hang out with one another every day. Like, I see them all the time. Yeah. Like, we talk to each other all day in the group chat. So it's legit. It's family It's, it's family more than it's music. It feels like it. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like it. Like, I don't look at them as musicians. Like, yeah. I look at them as, like... You can definitely t yeah. tell there's, like, chemistry. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There, like, yeah. I love the um the promo you guys did for your, your show at The Great Sky. Oh, my God. That was <laughs> awesome. Yo, that had me laughing yeah. my ass Super, off. Super, like, clever. Like, that, yeah. was, that was dope. Because I'm tired of just... Posting flyers on Twitter and Instagram, yeah. all that. We got to. That was like interactive. It was exactly. like, it was yeah. dope. Well, it shows you guys personalities well, and because you guys know each other so well, it's like that comes across so yeah, like exactly. clearly. It was so like authentic <laughs> and like, <laughs> it, it was great. Just, yeah, that was great. Um, yeah. So yeah, so just as, that, it's really cool that you guys all sort of um, stay connected like that. How does it, when it comes to supporting each other's music, it seems like you guys do that so well. Easy. Is is there like a, how do you guys work around sort of like who's going to come out when and like who's doing what? It's um it's not planned and it just all falls perfectly. Um, Like the rule that, we, not the rule, but like how we go by it is just when you're ready, you're ready. You know what I'm saying? Just keep working and if you feel like whatever you're making is ready to show the world, like you're ready to show the world, just do it. I'm not gonna stand in the way because we're all trying to like find our way in this game. You know what I'm saying? So if you're ready, just shoot. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna stand in your way. Word. Word. And I think the after you, Sam Lior is coming out, right? Exactly. He's the one. So check him out also. That's my point. Um, yeah. Um, so uh, in terms of the album Good Evil, yes. talk about the title. Good Evil. Um, I'm really big on duality and contradiction. Um, I just wanted to talk about, um, how can I explain it? Like all the bad things, quote unquote, bad things that happened to me growing up or whatever. I never looked at it in like a bad manner. I never looked at it in that light. Everything happens for a reason. And I just wanted to touch, shed light on that. And, like, although those things may happen, it made me who I am. And if I 
accept who I am right now, and, uh, and I, if I accept where I'm going, I have to accept where I came from. So that's just really that's beautiful. Like what it came from. That's beautiful. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that sort of um, philosophy. You know, where you exactly. like there's a when you understand your pain or what you you know you're right. you're it, it's not just like a, a trauma, but it's also a, some sort of a understanding in the pain. How like how much insight you can get from that. Exactly. Um, and it, it allows you to sort of take you know you not take life yourself. for granted yeah exactly you gotta love yourself bro. yeah so i i i i think that's maybe why i i connect with the album so much cuz i appreciate feel like it, i i connect with that ideology appreciate it bro um in terms of the production though the production is next level that's one of the reasons why this is my favorite album is just sound wise a1 my brother Kieran my brother Lacho yeah it sounds great oh man so so yeah so talk about like who had a uh, a hand in crafting this amazing album um a lot of people, but mostly me, um, my boy Louie, and my boy Kieran on it. Kieran did at least four beats on it. He did uh, Gangbanger, Guidance, Reflections, and God. And Louie, um, he helped mix it, as well as me. But, um, yeah. How, what was the process like creating such a uh, personal? Um, writing was easy those records because I wasn't thinking like I just felt it like I, I vividly remember writing Lukey a good kid I, like I wrote the first verse in like five minutes you know and I recorded it I think I took it I took one take to do it um but because it was just so real so authentic and I wasn't trying to reach perfection I just wanted to reach healing mm -hmm. you know and um it came from a special place, so I wasn't thinking too much. It came from the heart. But when I was making the album, a lot of it was just me by myself in the studio, just playing around, playing with my voice and all that, and me just being fully vulnerable because, like, going back um, to, like, what we talked about earlier, um, it just helped me become more confident when I was making it because I was just by myself a lot at the time, you know? And, um... Yeah, it was just me by myself in the studio and just like just playing with so many different sounds and all that. What um uh in terms of um how much of yourself you put into a record and, and the whole I know the writing process was easy, but in terms of putting yourself like the being vulnerable to to to, to who you are and putting that on an album and then having other people receive that. Was that easy also, or how much of that did you think about, like, man, should I really kind of be as honest as I'm being with my music? Does that, did that ever that, come to mind? Yeah, that was the tough part. Um, because not only was I being honest with myself, but I was shedding light on other people's stories, my family. And throughout the whole time, I didn't know how they would feel comfortable. Like, I plastered their face on the cover of it. You know what I'm saying? And, like, that was eating at me. Like throughout the whole time of making it, you know, it made me a little hesitant. I was like, yo, should I do this? Am I forcing it? You know, but um, I knew what it was going to do, you know. I knew, like, it was going to help me heal from whatever was bothering me, you know. And in order for me to go further, I had to, I had to heal from the past, you know. So I had to do it. And, yes, it was scary, it was very scary, but it had to be done. Yeah, you know, it had to. Has yeah. has any of your family members given you any sort of reception on the on the music? They loved it. Yeah. Um, they don't listen to it every day, yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but they love it. Um, like I put um like the cover art on my siblings' phone. I'm like, yeah. yo, show everybody. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I, but, um, I was uh, I was actually playing your album like uh, this past weekend. Like we were, me and Krita yeah. were in uh, Brooklyn, and we were just driving around, and we had some like a uh, uh, crew of people with us. Yeah. Um, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna put this on because I know they haven't, they don't know Luke yet, so I'm gonna so, put them yeah. on to you. So I'm um, playing the album, and then uh, somebody's like, oh, who's this? It's like, uh, this is Luke Bars. It's like, man, this is nice. I'm gonna yeah. look them up on they SoundCloud. looked it up on they, their phone. Yeah, and so the cover art, they're like, man, this cover art is sick. Like it, it like you know, because yeah. I think. Um, uh, who whose idea for the cover art was was it yours yeah. and and what, what were you thinking when you when you made that that cover art um the whole concept was me 
being around the closest people to me and they don't even know me at the same time. Mm-hmm. They don't know what's bothering me and I don't know them. Oh man, that's great. You know? Yeah. Wow. Um you have a question you want to throw in? Uh yeah. So you know, I wanna kinda keep going on about the record. Um can you talk about like like obviously the record is very personal. Um what sort of like themes do you want people or like lessons from the record do you want people to take from it? Um, from the whole album? Yeah. In general. Truth and not being afraid to express that. Um, yeah. I just wanted to share my truth and I wasn't afraid. Well, I was afraid. I, I had my point. I had my times when I was, but don't let that fear get in the way, you know? Um, what else? Just put in, just betting on yourself. Yeah. You know, um, there's a lot I can't think of off the top at the moment, but truth was the main thing that I was trying to, um, portray. Like that's one of the first things I say, the truth shall set you free on the album. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that was like I was really trying to just go by that and, and tell you and extend that my fault and express my truths, you know. Bert, um, definitely like uh, you know, the Brockton scene. W- I kind of want to switch it up a little bit. Um, can we talk about like the Brockton scene? Like, yeah. is there support? Like, absolutely amongst each other. Absolutely. And, um, like artist wise. Artist wise, even like fan wise, yeah. so like pe- people coming out supporting and because Brockton's such a small city but a big city at the same time. And yeah, we all knew each other for a very long time because yeah. we went to high school, one another, middle school. You know, the boys and girls club. Most of us came from the ball culture. You know, so and we all made that transition to music around the same time. Yeah, so it's like we was always with with one another, step by step. So. Not even just Van Buren, but Brockton as a whole. It just feels like everyone's just one big friend. Yeah, like, like everyone knows each yeah, other. Everyone like, knows each other. Exactly. That's dope. I keep saying that too because that's like something I feel like. I feel like what you guys do in Brockton is something that other communities, especially Massachusetts, where uh, we need that support and we need to support exactly. each other. So yeah, I keep any necessary. any time that I have that conversation, I always bring up Brockton as like, you know, like look at what they're doing on there. They're like supporting each other, not just as a collective like Van Buren is, but like the fan yeah. base. Yeah. Like they're all it's it's like I, it's a there's a connection there that we have to kind of like look at as like a model for what we should do. Yeah, we all have that. to kind of work together, have a yeah. have our part in it, you know, and just yeah. you know, make things happen. It's dope to see where it's heading. Cause I remember when we was just first starting, I remember like the yeah. first event that popped off and that was in 2015 and it's 2020 now, five years later. Yeah. You know, it's only been five years. Yeah. It's well, that, like everyone's quick. been, yeah. Going, yeah. you know, putting an effort towards it. Yeah. Um, I, w- one of my favorite things, uh, um, about you and I'd like to know whose idea concepts are these for the videos. I love you, the music videos, the, uh, gangbanger music video. Legit, Thank legit. Thank you. I loved it. I love also shout out to Damian Mejia, my boy Dame. He uh, uh, directed the video for Okay, Okay. Yes, I love that video also. Yeah. Um, with uh, with both uh, Gangbanger and and going back to Okay, Okay, uh, were like who whose idea was it for those um, for for the videos, the concepts? Um, I like to work like when I'm working with someone, I like everyone to have a hand in it. So for each of the videos, it would just be me and the director, and we're just going back and forth on what we would want, what angles we want, how we want it to be portrayed. Um, Game Bang, I was really hands-on with it. Just the whole concept was just me just showing uh, where I came from and, like, me fighting myself. Because that was the whole concept of Game Banger. Like, I'm not in the streets or whatever, but I feel like I can relate to them because we're both fighting a war somehow. Yeah. So that's what I was trying to portray, just fighting the internal battle that was within me. I think you did that very well because, yeah. like the, um, the, just the frame rate of the video mixed with you like drinking and like like talking yeah. to yourself as things are happening around you. Yeah, like your mother cr- coming across the camera, walking out like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you walking down the street <laughs> later. I'm, I was like, dude, I love this. This is like, it, it's simple, but it, it like it says everything that you need to know. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Um, 
So what do you do? You have another video up uh, uh, to look out for? Yeah, a lot. The whole album. Are yeah. you serious? Yeah. Every uh, every song has a video. We're just, we're just getting it started, bro. Oh, that's man. we're just getting it started. That's dope. Oh, that's something to look forward to. Yeah. So yeah, hell yeah, that's a that's a. There's more to it. There's more to it. What's uh? Do you know which song is next? Can't say. Can't oh, say. All right. <laughs> Damn. Damn it. Um. Shit. Well. Uh. So in terms of uh. Uh, other performances or or things you guys have planned for 2020. What do you? What does Van Buren and what do you have up your sleeve? Um, there's a lot, and there's a lot of things that we don't know yet because mm-hmm. things just pop up randomly. Um, but we're just gonna put the work in, and like whatever happens, we're gonna be prepared for it. I know that's cliche, but that's really how it be. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, things just randomly happen. You know what I'm saying? Some things are just out of our control. And, like, we just have to be prepared for the moment. And thank God we usually are. Are you planning on uh, doing any sort of touring? Hopefully. I re- I would really love to. Yeah. I'd love to see what the fan bases are in, like, other states Third, and other yeah, regions, exactly. you know? Because yeah. I know you have a I'm big... Curious too. <laughs> you have a big, big following here. So I know, yeah. you know, Massachusetts definitely represents. But exactly. uh, I'm curious to see, like, you know, what the, you know, other areas in other states think about you also me too man what's what's <laughs> what's that love been like just how how strong of a connection it seems crazy. like like you know what's been like uh any sort of touching moments you've had with any sort of people who listen to your music because it's like like um, it's, it's so personal that like you can't help but connect with it you know yeah. um face to face i haven't really seen it too much yet people just been showing love um to the album and all that but i've been getting a lot of dms Mm-hmm. Um, especially when it first came out, but it was a lot of heartwarming messages, and it was like I didn't know certain people felt that way about me, or I didn't realize that the album really touched them in that way. You know, people were really just pouring out their heart to me, and it touched me because I was like, "Wow, like I didn't know like my music affected you in that way," and it showed me how powerful music was. You know, because I'm still getting used to being an artist. You know, but it puts a little pressure on me, but also a battery on my back just to keep going. You know, you're on the right path and you could walk down that legendary path, you know, that not a lot of people are able to You just got to keep going. So it's just it's fun, you know. Yeah, man. In, just in terms of how you look at music and um, just the the way people connect with it, like just want to hear because I, I th- we have a good idea of that so far from just like hearing you talk about uh your thoughts but like how how do you what do you how do you see your music as and how do you see the uh, the art form of 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 creating music as you know some people do it for because you know they want some sort of power money fame whatever like but how do you uniquely look at the way uh music affects you and 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 how you what you put into your music um it all stems from curiosity Mm -hmm. because like i keep saying like i didn't expect to do this I didn't expect to be here but I'm here and I keep growing so I'm just curious to see how far I could take it you know um when I get in the studio I don't try to have I don't have a song in mind I just let the beat ride and the thoughts just come and it all comes from curiosity and it's just like my music if I would describe it it's just like one big imagination Mm -hmm. you know it's just little worlds that's going on in me. But it all just stems from curiosity, and I'm just curious to see how far it can go, you know, because this is just the beginning, you know? And, like, and within, within this short period, I was able to do a lot, and I was able to touch so many people. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's crazy. What's that process like when you, when, you're, when you are creating music? Is there a set process or you just let it come out of you naturally? I let it come out of me. Sometimes I try to force it. Not force it, but sometimes I overthink, you know, because, you know, I'm human. I'm an artist. And that's what we do. But once I run into that, like, I just go back to how I got there and just creating from the heart and creating from curiosity. You know, I don't try to I don't try to force it. Because you could tell when it's forced. You know, it's not saying that it's not good, but it just doesn't connect yeah, I with agree. me as much, yeah, you know? I agree. Um, is there a difference when you're creating sort of uh, a song just on your own? Like, this is 
you know, Luke Barr song compared to like I'm on a record with like either, you know, one of my Van Buren buddies or like a group oh, song. Yeah. It's like is what's the is it a different process? Um oh not different process. Um But what's the difference like there then? If, if any. Subject matter, mm-hmm. probably. Um you could say process in a way, but yeah, it's really just subject matter that changes up, mm-hmm. you know. Um, actually, yeah, that's really it. Like, I don't really create too much people, and and I don't really create too many people in the room. Like, if I do a feature, a lot of the times they sent the verse to me. Mm-hmm. Like, it's rare that me and someone are in the studio or like we're writing. So I don't really see it too much, you know. But when I have, but when when I have created, like when we started from scratch and we did all that, um, we try to just, I call it kinetic energy, where you just feel it. Um, you don't have to say something. You don't have to say anything. Just the energy in the room is just going to align us to make a song, whatever. Especially, I usually do that with my producer homies. Like, I, like before, like I used to like say, yo, I want a beat that sounds like Vince Staples or whatever. Mm. But now I just stop that. And I'm just like, yo, let's just create. And you, you want the Luke Bars type beat now? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But now, like, I don't even have to say anything. We're just quiet for two hours, and we just find it, you know. So. So yeah, um, I mean, so a lot of times you're like in the room with the producers you're, you're like um, working with and here then, and there. Yeah, like a lot of good evil beats. Um, they were made while um, each of us were like by ourselves. Yeah, but um. I try to, whatever floats, whatever works. Sometimes I like to be in the room creating the beat. Sometimes I like to just, I like for you to send it and I just write it while I'm alone and all yeah. that. Whatever works. Yeah. You know, for whatever floats. Well. Um, for for just coming back around to your album again. That's cool. Um, yeah, we're just gonna keep going back to the record. Oh, shit, <laughs> There's so much no that problem, I know. <laughs> after we we get done recording this, I'm gonna like be watching this later and be like, oh man, I should have asked, asked this part <laughs> of the song. Yeah. Um, but uh, I go back to God because even though that's like a record where it's like there's a lot more ambience to it, I, it leaves me just I don't know. The, I, I I guess it's the perfect song to end the album because it like it leaves me with some sort of a feeling. Can you talk about sort of why you uh, like the just God and and why you chose to end the album with it? Um, like why I made it? Uh, it could be why you made it, but but um, yeah, yeah let's get like a, I just want a little uh, behind the scenes of of crafting that song oh, and okay. then deciding that yeah. that was gonna be the one that you're gonna close out the album with. That was one of the first songs I made when working on this project. Um, why I decided to end it? It just felt right. Yeah, it just felt right. It felt like an outro. It did. Yeah. Um, I only said like. I only had like 16 bars on it, but I said what I needed and I just let the vocals and I just let the music just speak, you know? And like, that was the one record where I wasn't really traditionally rapping, you know? It was just like, to me it was more like poetry, Yeah. you know? But it just felt right, you know? And that's how like a lot of the songs on the album made it. It just felt right. Like I made about like 60 to 70 records for the whole thing, but those eight, it just felt, it just, it all had that same feeling when I was creating it. So you, you, it seems like you like, more than just like the thinking about like a hotline or you know whatever. You're thinking more. You're writing from the heart. It seems like most of the time. He's like, you have to. the heart of a poet. I have to. Yeah. I have to. Man. Yeah. I have to. Those um those other songs that you wrote, do they have a place on a different project or um do you think like it's the just one like, that's in the vault? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Or, or it's just like I wrote these songs for this project. I don't think I'm gonna use them um, like for anything. It'll else. never be on. Actually, let me not say never. Okay. I never <laughs> know what's gonna happen. Yeah. But um, I know a lot of them won't see daylight because yeah. a lot of them aren't good. You know, I'm not gonna lie. Um, who knows? Hopefully, they can see daylight. Some of them. Like, I still, I'll share them with anyone that wants to hear it. You know, I'll make a little playlist and send it to people. Yeah. Some of them are fire. Some of them I said way too much. That I was like, I can't. Okay. I couldn't put that. I couldn't put it on the album. But 
hopefully, like I think about it, like here, every here and there, um, like what I'm gonna do. But I'm always creating music, so it's like I don't think about it, you know. Like I put that in a separate folder, and now I'm starting a whole new folder, and like I'm trying to make a hundred songs this year, you know. So sometimes I don't really think about it, those records, and sometimes I do think about it, and I try to think about what I'm gonna do, but only like who knows, like what's gonna happen with it. Word. When you're when you're writing, are you is there? Do you have stuff just pre written, ready to go, and then you record over a beat, or do you um, listen to like a beat and then you kind of get in the mood and then kind of go into it? Yeah, I listen to the beat first. Sometimes I have like lines that I said already on a different song, but I like it better here. Sometimes I have lines that I've been thinking about, you know, within the past few days or whatever, but. Yeah, lately I've been um. If I, I jot down lines, like when I come across, um, especially like in the shower lately, like I'm just thinking to myself and like a little cool line will pop up and like I just go write that on my phone and, hopefully, like I'll just go back to it, but I'll probably forget. But <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> but um, yeah. Like a lot of it, I just think. A lot of it, um, I, I lost my train of thought, I'm sorry. It's all good, it's all good. It happens, man. I'll try to keep going, I'm like, yo, what am I saying? <laughs> no, it definitely happens. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I, we'll just wind it down from here because uh, we got to get out of the studio. We're going to yeah. get kicked out soon, so we're just going to close it out now. Yeah, but shut um, the lights off on us. Yeah, before mm -hmm. we do that, uh, I'll give you another chance. Uh, if you have anything promo-wise that you want to kick out to the audience and let them know about. Yeah. Um, and, and also if, you know, anyone on your team has yeah. stuff coming out too, definitely yeah. plug, plug away. It's VB all year. VB all century. Um, just go listen to good evil. Now is this the camera? Yeah. Yeah. Both of these. Yeah. My name is Luke bars. I dropped the album called good evil. I think you should listen to it because I like it. You may like it. These guys like it. A lot That's of people true. like it. So let's listen to it, you know? Yeah. Come I'll, to the shows, because the shows are fun and they're crazy. They're really different, you know? What's that been like real quick? Before we yeah, close know, it out, right? actually, yeah, yeah. now that you that's mentioned good, that's it. That's good. Shows, um, I'm still getting used to it. Like the last show I did, The Great Scott, that was my favorite, one of my favorite shows I've done, you know, personally. Um, it's just been fun because people, they know the words now. Um, like when we do reflections with Duke, they're just like, they're screaming, girl. And it's just like let's go, <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's a great feeling. It just yeah. pumps you up. But um, they just they just keep getting better. Um, each show and all that, just new ideas, just keep popping up. Like the show aspect and the album aspect, it just makes me love it a lot. The album a lot more, cause like I'm adding more variation to the album with it being out already, you know. And it's giving it more of an experience, and you know, and like I'm watching people's face, and I'm just watching how it affects. Like how it's affecting them so it just it just keeps giving me more confidence just to keep creating and all that yeah it's dope man Work. thank you so much you. for joining us seriously oh, thank you for having uh, me bro yeah man like i said man 2020 is your year is the year of van buren oh, yeah uh good evil so far best release of 2020 so go Facts. check that out all Facts. streaming platforms Facts. check Everywhere. out gangbanger Dope ass visuals. Facts. Apparently, we're getting more visuals. Apparently, so we're getting more be visuals. Be on the lookout for that. That's a fact. So be on the lookout for that. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. gonna be a Van Buren 2020 again. Luke Bars, thank you for for thank uh, you. coming by, thank hanging with us, me, and uh, getting to know you a little bit more. It's been great. Thank you, bro. Thank um, you for having me. Oh man, thank you. For the people at home, if you like this episode, if you fuck with us, like, comment, subscribe. I, I say it all the time. If you like, comment, subscribe, you show us support. And you, you also us got up. merch. I yeah, got merch, buy some man. merch. We got merch. You got merch. <laughs> Does Luke Bars has some merch? It's coming. It's coming. Soon. So buy that. We need some Luke Bars merch. We definitely yeah, need some do. Luke definitely. Bars merch. So um, crazy, man. check out our Grindhouse store um, for for merch. Yep. Uh, if you like, comment, subscribe. We'll send you some free shit. Um, yeah. Bro? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, so thank you guys again. Uh, I'll see you. We'll see you next week. Yeah. Uh, peace. New episode. Peace. Yeah.